Hey guys, before we start the video, I just wanted to ask a couple things. If you could, make sure to leave a like on the video, that'll help me out a whole lot. And if you want to see more guides just like these and be notified, make sure you subscribe and click that bell, that way you're notified when I upload brand new videos. That will allow me to continue making content like this. And if you're interested on seeing me live, there will be a link in the description below for my Twitch channel, as well as my Discord if you're looking to chat it up, see some memes, uh, keep up with videos, keep up with announcements and all that good stuff. I also do giveaways on Sunday on the Xbox One platform. I stream Wednesday through Sunday. Thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you watching up until this point, and let's get on to the video. All right, other quick crash course, Almir Fug. So for your dry dock, to pen, like hopefully your clan has made a dry dock, your configure rail jack here. This is what you have. So this is kind of overwhelming. You're like, holy shit, that's a lot of stats. So I'll explain this bit by bit. First up, you have your shields and what you pick up will show here. If I had to tell you anything, don't repair any junk that you have unless it is a Mark III. Do not bother putting resources into it unless it is a Mark III. Um, something cool you can do this is kind of what I really like this idea when it comes to balance fusion. So say if I want to increase the stats on this, you select it and then go to balance fusion. And then it's going to ask me to consume this other one, increasing the stats of it. So it's going to tell me the result Levon shield, uh, Mark three array. It increases the shield regeneration per second, shield regeneration delay and the amount of shield capacity. I'm going to, I'm not going to select it cause I already have like the highest tier one. It's the exact same one for Vidar as well. Um, you notice we got a few engines while we were out doing there, but it's the same concept. I wouldn't bother repairing it unless it is a Mark three. Um, same thing for plating. We got a Mark one, Mark two, II, Mark three. They like said, I wouldn't bother repairing it unless it's a Mark three and a reactor. So this is what they did with reactors. They decided to make it to where your reactor depends on what your power strength, your range duration is going to be for the abilities that you have. So for like my seeker volley, my the, the abilities, I can't remember the abilities and I have any mods, but so you see how this says 60 battle mod strength and battle mod range. So that increases the power range and the strength of the uh, destructive abilities that I have in my railjack. I can't, I can't think of the right words. I'm, I'm, I'm brain farting. But same thing. Wouldn't bother repairing it unless it's a Mark III. For armaments, uh, somebody told me the best turrets are. I can't remember. I would look up a YouTube video for this. I don't there's dude, there's so many variations of turrets. Do not listen to what anything I say about turrets because I, I honestly don't know. I don't know what's the best. I don't know what's the best fire rate, best accuracy. I would probably watch a YouTube video on that. But I have I went with Zet Key and Vidar and they do the job just fine because the primary thing about Railjack is you're mostly relying on your abilities and not your turrets. So I just I've just kind of stuck with these for the longest time now. Uh, Tycho Seeker Mark, Mark III, they have not come up anything but this. You can get a Tycho Seeker Mark III if it is researched in your clan's dojo. And I'll show you where to get that in just a second. So next, <coughs> we have your upgrade segment. And here's your mods. And again, this is kind of like, be like, holy shit, that's a lot of numbers and stuff like that. A little bit overwhelming. So my hull and my shield is varied on what type of uh, plating that I have. You saw that I was using the Vidar or the Zet Key plating. That's what determines your hull and your armor for your Railjack. So if you see how it says, reduces damage to health by 93.8%. Shields are not affected by armor. The maximum amount of health or damage reduction you can get is capped at 93.8%. So what most people go with is usually Levon plating because it has the highest hull amount as opposed to armor since the armor caps out the hull does not and that's all your main stats so you see your shield recharge and charge delay and everything and there's the battle mod range and strength and all that um so this is the integrated section there's your artillery that is the big ass gun that's the big ass gun mod uh some of these mods i bought and some of them i obtained and if you played railjack at all before they did the update, um, they used to be called Dirac, which is how you upgraded your ship and your mods, but not anymore. They made it, they simplified it, they turned it into mods instead, which I'm thankful as fuck that they did, because it was a it was a big mess before. It was another big learning curve for people, and then thankfully they changed it over. 
So if you want to screenshot this and like get an idea of what mods to go after, this would be a good example. I don't have the best mods yet. I think I'm still missing one currently, but this has served me well in every single kind of mission that the game can throw at me currently. So that's the integrated mods. Then you have your battle mods. So that first ability we're talking about where we were taking out the ships and causing them to be stunned is Blackout Pulse. And I think that's actually a very consistent drop. I have like three others and I've also like transmuted the whole bunch. Uh, the Shadow Burst is what I was talking about earlier where I can just blow up all of those little red mines and everything. Range and strength will primarily affect all three of my battle mods because of the power strength that is provided by my reactor. So the best ones I think is Blackout Pulsed, Shadow Burst, and Seeker Volley. Probably the best ones. Seeker Volley, very easy to get. Uh, Shatter Burst, very easy to get. Um, there used to be one called Tether. That used to be the big meta before, but not anymore. Um, it just wasn't as good with Corpus missions because of their shields. So Tether kind of got thrown out. Now it's just mostly Seeker Volley for small ships. Shatter Burst to, to get your loot and Blackout Pulse to stop the cruise ships. So, and uh, you have your tactical. Remember I was telling you earlier, form up, battle stations, and battle forge. Allow me to recall you guys giving turret damage bonus and a battle forge reducing the forge cooldown and i don't know what the best best in slot is for the for the tactical but this is what i've stuck with and again haven't really struggled at all so it's just kind of what i've gone with all right and the last piece is intrinsics here's your intrinsics your intrinsics how many you have is up here at your top right corner. The 10th Command Intrinsics is not available. Command Intrinsics, I wouldn't worry about this since you're lower level, lower MR. Um, that allows you to have crew members. I'm just gonna tell you straight up, I really feel Railjack still sucks solo because the AI is such trash. The AI in the game is still absolute trash. So if you try to do Railjack, I would try and do it with friends um, and try to run with somebody who's just a little bit higher than you. Um, your engineering, so if you want to know what you get from ranking these up, you click your right stick, and then it's going to show you all the perks of when you rank them up. Same thing for gunnery, right stick, shows you the perks, right stick, shows you the perks, right stick, shows you the perks. And Intrinsics gives you Master Rank. Master Rank is currently tied to uh, Intrinsics with Railjack. So the more intrinsic you rank up, you'll also get more mastery rank that way. And then you have your crew. But like I said, it's up to you. If, it's really going to be up to you if you want to form a crew and go solo. Because it just I feel like it takes a little bit more time going solo. But this is the crew that I've had. In the next update, in the Sisters of Parvos update, they are doing another system where crew members will have exceptionally maxed out abilities and are going to have special perks. So if you are planning on forming a crew, I would wait till after Sisters of Parvos drops. So that way you are not wasting standing with Ticker. In order to hire crew members, you have to go to Ticker on Fortuna. So if you haven't gone there yet, you haven't grinded out any debt bonds, you will not be able to hire any crew members. And as far as looks and custom customization goes, this is completely how you set this up and just go to your right here. All right, this should be the last thing. This should be the last explanation is the scrap components and the armaments. So all the stuff that we got while we were out, or anything that you fixed, anything that you fixed up is gonna show up here. This will be all the fixed stuff. All right, so your scrap wreckage, this is all the stuff that is currently scrap that you have to fix in order to use it. So this is currently a very good endo farm on Warframe, and you just select it, select, 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 select. And I get 1500 endo. For scrapping all this stuff. You have a maximum of 30 scrap wreckage, which is also going to be updated in Sisters of Parvos. You used to have a max of 30. Um, I'm not sure if they are increasing it or if they are removing the limit. I cannot recall. Before you go out on a mission currently, if you're above the scrap wreckage, it's going to kick you from the squad. And I think that's it. A very long explanation, I know. But that's... Railjack itself is another very, 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 very big learning curve. Um, let's see. So the research, here's the militia. There, here, all right, yeah, here's where you get the Tycho Seeker Mark III. I forgot that one, that one extra detail, but... Whew. Here. So, the front of the ship, this is the main control area. I'll give you Almir Fug, I'll give you a quick uh, crash course. This is the front of the ship, where you pilot it, and when you're piloting, you hold down your right bumper, 
you do A, X, or B. I suggest B when you're fighting a lot of fighters. Uh, if you see a cruise ship, it'll be like a diamond shape, and you're going to send this out to disable it. So there's that. And there's a big gun down here. When you unlock a certain intrinsic, that's where horse is currently at. And what you can do, when you have it unlocked anyway, I think you need like four or three gunnery to access this. But when you go down here, it gives you access to the big ass laser. This is the gun. The big ass laser gun. You just charge it up, and this is what you do or use to take out cruise ships. And you can switch between the big ass gun or these guys, these front uh, these front lasers, and the person piloting this area also has ability access to abilities as well. Same thing. Hold right bumper and do B, X, or A. B for secret volley and A for your uh, ship disabling ability. On the side of the ship, um, I can't remember if they got rid of them. Did they get rid of them? Yes, they did. Okay, so they got rid of the turrets on the side. So don't worry about that. This is the exit point to exit out of the railjack. That's how you go out of the railjack, and when you're near the railjack, you can just like spam X to get back into the ship. And there's also an arsenal. There's also a ventral turret right here. Again, same thing. You can use different lasers. You can also use abilities here too. So up to three people on your railjack crew can use abilities, making missions a little bit more speedy. And down here is the forge. So say if you're in the big gun, you're out of uh, dumb charges. When you have enough resources, you'll craft more. Um, hull Restore, Energy, Revolite. If you have a decent group together, you shouldn't have to worry about any of this. But if you are not in a good group and you need more energy, you can do go down here and craft more energy. Same thing with munitions. You can do a Hull Restore. You can make more Dome Charges, so on and so forth. There is a total of four forges. You can only craft one per forge. They each are going to have a 300 second cooldown. So you got one, two, three, and four. And another cool thing, a lot of people forget to use something that Sharper Dynamics actually told me. So if you hold your right bumper down, and then you do left on your D-pad, you can teleport quickly in the ship. So you can go to the forge, you can go to the slingshot, you can go to the airlock, you can go to the turret, or the other turret, and also the bridge. So I can fast travel back to the bridge, and then right back to the forge, if I need to quick craft something very quickly. So remember, it's just right bumper, left in your D-pad, you don't have to keep holding right bumper once you summon this up. And then you just go right back to the bridge. That's how you can fast teleport through the ship. Oh, something else I forgot to mention, Almir Fug. Um, so when you're at the helm, I also forgot about this, right bumper plus left in your d-pad. There's also special abilities that you can put on your railjack, like you can do form up, battle stations, like these are the ones that I have. This one reduces the forge cooldown by 100 seconds, and that ability itself has a cooldown. There's battle stations, increases your turret damage by 65% for 26 seconds. Um, and then form up, so I can actually call people back if I want to. Other cool, other cool, neat abilities you can put on a railjack. But these are all based off of mods, your plating, your reactor, your shield array, and your engines. That's all you have to do! <laughs>